What you are looking at right now is a twisted version of how we normally think of a square. We usually imagine a square as four straight sides of equal length and four right angles. But here, the twisted part is just that the two sides of this shape are curved and two are straight, but all four are the same length. Meaning, if we call the common side length as A, all match this length. Also this angle, this angle, then this angle, and this angle, all of them are right angles. So yeah, this is in fact sort of a square. Okay, now here's the fun part. Using only this piece of information, if we extend these lines like this, such that they intersect at this point, then can you find out the exact value of this angle theta between them? Okay, here's how we can do it. Can you tell me what will be this point of intersection? It will be the center of this smaller circle. So do you know why? Because look here. If we draw a line that touches the circle at exactly one point, we call them tangents. And the rule is that a tangent is always perpendicular to the radius at the point of contact. We call this line the normal line that goes through the center and passes through that same point of contact. Now look here, each of these straight lines are perpendicular at this point of contact, which means they are simply the normal line. And hence, when you extend those two lines, they must meet at the circle's center. That same center ends up being the center of this bigger arc too, because these two same lines are also the normal for this bigger arc, as these two angles are also right angles. Great! Now we all know that the circumference of a circle of radius r is 2 times pi times r. Also, a full circle makes 360 degrees, or 2 times pi in radian. But if you only consider a part of this circle, and let this angle subtended by this arc be theta measured in radians, then what will be the length of this arc? Simple. Let us call it L. So, just cross multiply to get 2 pi L equals 2 pi R times theta. Cancel 2 pi from both sides to get L equals R times theta. Noise. Now look at this smaller circle. Let us label its radius as R. If this is angle theta, then this remaining angle will be 2 pi minus theta, right? So the length of this arc will be equal to r times 2 pi minus theta. This means a, which is the variable we have used to label all four equal sides equals r times 2 pi minus theta. Now look at this bigger arc. What will be the radius of this big circle? It will be a, or this length plus this r, right? Now this is angle theta. So the length of this arc will be equal to a plus r times theta. But this arc length is also equal to a. So we have a equals this. Hey, we can substitute the value of a here to get this as r times 2 pi minus theta plus r. Whole times theta equals this is also r times 2 pi minus theta. Take r as common from both of them to get r times 2 pi minus theta plus 1 times theta equals r times 2 pi minus theta. Oh my god, r gets cancelled from both sides, and we are left with this. Now expand this to get 2 pi theta minus theta squared plus theta equals 2 pi minus theta. Bring everything on the right-hand side to get theta square minus 2 pi theta minus theta minus theta plus 2 pi equals 0. Both of them will become minus 2 theta. Finally, we get theta square minus, this will be 2 pi plus 2 times theta plus 2 pi equals 0. This is a quadratic equation in theta, and I will not bore you solving this. We get theta as nearly 7.4385 and 0 0.8447. Now, 7.4 radians is more than 300 degrees which is way too big for the angle drawn between those two lines. It clearly looks like a small acute angle in the figure. So the only value that matches the geometry is 0 0.8447 radians, which is about 48 degrees. Isn't this problem super duper cool? So good!